everyone, welcome to part two of my reworking slash rebalancing series, where we take a look at a specific class and go through changes to make them a bit more fun, a bit better designed, a bit better balanced, or maybe even give some stuff new mechanics or different kits. Today, I am going to be trying to tackle chargers, which is going to be very fun for most of them, and then we're going to get to the two longest range chargers, which need a rework and have to try to fix them in a game with maps that don't make them fun. I'm sure that will work out perfectly, so subscribe if you enjoy, and let's get started. So for the weapon class as a whole, one big thing I want to do is try to make them a bit more interactive, incentivize a bit of repositioning and moving around more. Because right now, chargers have very campy and stalling gameplay, which forces everyone in the match to play around their specials. While this isn't too bad lately due to Tacticooler's insane duration, that's still a special. And chargers also have some matchups that are a little bit too oppressive, like against Splatlings mainly. Which means if chargers are ever good, it's going to hurt backline diversity a ton. And finally, I'd also like to slightly boost their flexibility since right now they're a little bit niche, so making them able to be picked in more places I think would be a solid buff. I don't really have many general changes other than Respawn Punisher, which incentivizes all the problems I just mentioned, makes them more extreme, and just makes everyone play the game less. Reworking this ability would be a topic for another time, so for this video, uh, Respawn Punisher is dead. It's nerfed in some way to where it's basically not worth running, and we're not going to mention it from here on out. So let's get started with Squiffer. This main weapon is actually mostly balanced right now. It has a unique gimmick with its full charge speed in the air, it's fun to use and fight, its range isn't that oppressive, its paint is fine, and it's just overall in a solid spot. It just has a really weak kit right now, balance-wise. I think one small change it could get, though, is being lightweight. This is mainly because before Splatoon 3 came out, the devs literally described this weapon as a lightweight charger. But it's not, and I don't know why it's not. That little bit of extra boost to its swim and run speed would actually be really useful for this weapon, so I think it would be fair. Obviously, though, the main thing is a second kit. And while Zipcaster could be really fun for this weapon, that special's not the best spot balance-wise. So let's go with a kit that I think will be a bit more safe. We can give it back its auto bomb that it had in Splatoon 2, since it's a fairly cheap bomb that can help with a lot of flexibility as well as locating targets. And for the special, the newly buffed Trizuka, helping it against more long-range weapons that it would be going against in comps, as well as helping its team get in. I don't think Squiffer really needs too much, but I think this new kit and a little bit of an extra boost is just what it needs. Next up is Gootuber. This is a charger built around the charge hold gimmick, which isn't really that special. There's a lot of things in the game with a charge hold, and having a slightly better one just isn't something that's worth all the trade-offs this weapon has, mainly with its terribly slow charge time. I mean, this thing literally has torpedo and missiles, one of the best kits in the game, and we barely see it. The only time it was good is when it could spam the special, which uh, isn't really the best spot for a weapon either. The main change I want to do is make its gimmick a bit more unique and impactful. Give it something special with its charge hold that no other weapon has. My idea is being able to use subs without losing your charge hold. So maybe you can charge up a little bit, throw a torpedo to find a target, then when your torpedo hits someone, just immediately have a full charge to capitalize off it, or at least enough to kill. Like, that could be really interesting. It could also work with other subs. For example, GooTubers had Curling Bomb in the past, and being able to use one for a movement tool without losing your charge could be very useful. It might not do too much balance-wise, but I think it would be really fun and set it apart design-wise. It would be much more unique and special of a weapon to use. As for the balance, though, we can make it a little bit better. We can decrease its overall charge time by 5 frames, which would affect the first ring, not the second one, and we can take away the 5% range reduction it has in its partial charges, since that was a bit of an unnecessary change when they added it. This just makes the weapon a little bit faster and have access to full charges or partials that can kill you a little bit easier, since right now, it is one of the longest charge times in the game. Gootuber already has a solid kit, so I think these changes would be enough to have it see some use, and definitely be way more fun. Alright, Splat Charger and E-Leader are going to be one section. These are the chargers that control the most space, have the worst playstyle right now for the game, and are the thing that needs the most changes. These weapons' playstyle is the most linear in all the three games, and while I know the poor impact on things is mostly due to the map design, we kinda gotta balance around that at this point. So, here's my idea. Don't hate me for this. Let's start with two nerfs. We're going to be reducing the range of all of these chargers. Spot Charger will start by having slightly less range than Hydra rather than slightly outranging it. This will still be more than Bamboo. Splatter Scope will now be Splat Charger range, E-Leader will be Splatter Scope range, and E-Leader Scope will be E-Leader range. This is a very small reduction, but it's going to force them to be just a little bit further forward, and mainly means their matchups against Splatlings will be a lot more bearable for the Splatling user. On top of that, we're going to add a bit more more 
downtime to give points where the opponents could be able to approach even without specials. The way we'll do this is by adding whiting frames, basically a delay before you can recover your ink tank after using a charge shot. This will be 40 frames for Splat Charger and 60 for Elyr, which is still on the lower end of things. There's many other weapons like Range Blaster or Dynamo Roller that have more than these. This also doesn't apply to tap shots. So if you full charge and then tap shot a little bit for the whiting frames to run out, you will be able to recover your ink immediately. This is mainly here to add more time between your long distance sniping pressure, not painting. So what's the trade-off of these? You know how GooTuber can partial charge people? Yeah, 85% of the charge on these weapons is now also going to be able to deal 100 damage and be able to kill people. This was a mechanic that was originally on these chargers in Splatoon 1, but it had two trade-offs. One, it required damage up, and two, partial charges had 20% less shot range than they do in this game. The lack of gear dependency and further range partial charges, which I don't want to reduce since the weapons already have less range in this game than Splatoon 1, is why it's going to be an entire 85%. But still, that's going to shave a lot of frames to kill. This means Spot Charger's kill time will go from 60 to 51 frames, and E-Leaders will go from 93 to 79 frames. Obviously, with the partial, you'll have a little bit less range, but this is a lot faster of a kill time that can make defending yourself in these more aggressive positions more feasible, as well as just making chargers more fun with some unique depth to them. I'll also give E-Leader a small extra buff. Its tap shots can be buffed from 40 to 45, which would affect its partial damage curve. I think this would be fair since it is a longer charge and its partials wouldn't deal as much damage as quickly as splat chargers, so this would compensate for that. This is a bit of an extreme rework, but I think this would be a way to bring back a mechanic from Splatoon 1 in a way that's more fair, push chargers to being more interactive, while giving them more tools to compensate so it's more fun for them than it was pre-patch. Let me know what you guys think of this, because it was definitely the hardest thing to come up with. Anyway, let's get to pencil. Believe it or not, the Snipe Rider is actually in a pretty good spot balance-wise. Its weaknesses really aren't too big a deal right now, and it's gotten some solid buffs. It could be a little bit more fun to use, and it can have similar impacts on the game to the long-range chargers, even if not as bad. Its main issue, however, which could be more of a problem in a later meta that we want to fix, is its horrible, and I mean horrible, object damage. Here are the changes. Since this has splatter scope range, like with splatter scope, we'll also give this the slight range reduction, now matching splat charger. Because this also affects its pain output, though, I think it's a bit more severe of a nerf here. So let's give it a more impactful buff that can be really fun, a charge hold. This will work just the same as a normal charge hold, but it will come at a bit of a cost since this is quite strong for this weapon. It will consume one of your five shots every time you go in and out of the ink. Say you use two shots, then using a charge hold would consume your third shot and you would only have two left when you got out of it. I think this would be fun on this weapon and increase the amount of positions it can play. We'll also increase its object damage slightly from 0.8 to Crab and 0.9 to Booyah to 1.2 on both of them. It still wouldn't be amazing object damage, but it would be way better in that regard, so stuff like Crab wouldn't be as hard a counter. This would probably make Sniper Rider better than it already is, which it's pretty solid right now, but to be fair, I think it's a bit of a Zones and Clams niche at the moment, so these buffs should be fine. Last up is the Bamboozler. It suffers from the same object damage problem. In fact, I'll already get this out of the way, it's gonna get the same change as Sniper Rider did in terms of its object damage. The main issue to me though, is I think its kit, while fine for the weapon, is just kind of basic and bland. I've seen some Bamboozler players talking about how that it just isn't as fun for them as some of the kits they had access to in Splatoon 1 or 2. So I think we could focus on giving it a more unique and fun kit for it. I would go with Torpedo since it gives some unique combo and movement potential, which I could definitely see being fun while also being good for the weapon. As for the special, let's go with Super Chump. This has some comboing as well as body blocking capabilities, which I think could be very fun and maybe somewhat reminiscent of Bubble Lore from Splatoon 2, while also being a solid entry tool for its team that can play off the unique speed this weapon plays at. I think this could be an interesting kit that gives it access to some more backless and aggressive style comps to play with and just has a bit more fun tools to use. So hopefully that works out. Well, that's the Chargers. This was definitely a hard episode to do. Let me know what you guys think of this series so far and what classes you want to see next. And I'll see you all next time.